I'm going to briefly discuss vector spaces and quantum mechanics. Um, I want to emphasize this is not mathematically rigorous or complete. It's intended to give you an understanding. So a linear vector space um, consists of a set of vectors. Um, and some rules which allow you to combine them. We'll call these vectors um, Psi1, Psi2, Psi3, etc. Um, and a set of rules. Now the rules um, <coughs> consist of how we combine vectors um, and how we change them by applying scalars. So we have vector addition, and vector addition needs to be um, associative, that is um, psi1 plus psi2 in brackets added to psi3 gives you the same result as psi1 added to psi2 plus psi3. Um, it also needs to be commutative. So psi1 plus psi2 is equal to psi2 plus psi1. Um, we need to have an identity, which in this case is just a zero vector. Um, and we need to have an inverse for each vector, such that psi1 plus psi1 inverse, that's a totally non-standard notation, but it should be clear, is equal to the zero vector. Um, we can scale each of the vectors, um, and the vector space has a property called closure, uh, which effectively says that if we scale and combine the vectors, we get another vector in the space, which we could write as saying psi is equal to a1 psi1 plus a2 psi2, where a1 and a2 are scalars. Um, and Psi is also in the space. So if we scale or add the vectors together, then we create another vector that lies within the vector space. Um, scalar multiplication obeys the usual rules of scalar arithmetic. Um, in quantum mechanics, we use what's called a Hilbert space. Um, named after the mathematician David Hilbert. Um, this is a vector space with an inner product. And the inner product is defined so that we combine Psi1 and Psi2 to equal some scalar B. The inner product has to be um, to obey conjugation. Um, so conjugation means that psi 2 psi 1 star is equal to psi 1 psi 2. Um, it has to be linear. Um, and you can define this in a number of ways. Um, I'm going to define it as follows, Psi1 plus Psi2 comma, whoops, I don't mean the B there, I mean a um, Psi3 is equal to Psi1 comma Psi3 plus Psi1 2 Psi3. Um, and you also have to have a linearity with respect to scalars, um, so we would say that a Psi1 comma uh, make the mistake again. Um, a psi one comma psi two is equal to um, a times psi one psi two. Uh, you can define the linearity with respect to the right-hand operator, which in this case would be the one on the right-hand side of the bracket. Um, notice that if you do that, you're going to have to be just a little bit careful um, about conjugation. So if A, for instance, is a complex number, 
um, then if we had an A, we have to watch out for its complex conjugate. Uh, the Hilbert space, the inner product has to be positive definite, um, which means simply that we must be bigger than zero. So psi one comma psi one is greater than or equal to zero. Um, that's just saying that we have a norm. Um, and in mathematical terms, this is known as a normed vector space. One more thing we need to define the vector space is to do with dimension. Um, but to understand that, we have to talk about linear independence. Um, so let me just define that. A set of vectors, um, independence, a set of vectors is linearly independent if the product sum over i of ci psi i equals zero implies that ci must equal zero. In other words, the only way you can combine them to make naught is if the coefficients rule naught. Um, so that's the definition of linear independence. The dimension of a vector space um, is simply the maximum number of linearly independent vectors you can have in that space. The maximum number of linearly independent vectors. Now I'm going to abbreviate independent here. Uh, the basis of a vector space is any set of linearly independent, a complete set that is, of linearly independent vectors. A classic example um, of a vector space is Euclidean space, that is three-dimensional space. Um, which has three dimensions, because uh, we only need three dimensions to span space, um, and it is real. We don't need complex numbers to represent it. Now in quantum mechanics, uh, we use complex vectors and scalars. And we can have finite or infinite spaces. The significance, of course, of any vector psi um, in a vector space when we're thinking about quantum mechanics is that that vector will represent a state of the system. Um, and using Dirac notation, um, we, of course, use ket psi to represent um, a member of the vector space. When you take the complex conjugate, or rather the Hermitian conjugate of ket psi, we get bra psi. Um, the inner product in position representation can be taken as an integral of the bra and the ket. Um, and we follow all of the rules that we followed before. Um, this is a formal mathematical approach. Um, if you like that kind of thing, it can be very useful. Um, it can help you understand what the vectors, what the wave functions are, and why we use Dirac notation. Um, please be careful not to make too close a connection between Euclidean space and quantum mechanics, because while the two are related, they are not the same. Um, in particular, complexity is a key part um, that you have to worry about.